and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sarah. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner haunts them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay. And cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the most high covenant. And overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
out of your grace be granted us. Let this day we will not just be heroes of the world, but doers of this same world. That walking in the light of the world, who will never walk in darkness? Who will never be overcome by the weight of our flesh in worldly standards in the handing of the man? The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in details. Forgive your neighbor, your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Forget not all His benefits. Number one of the benefits, He pardons all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. That's a benefit for you. Since he had no way of paying him back, his master ordered him to be sold alongside with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him over and said, Be patient with me. Have compassion on me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. The master of the servant. Let him go and forgive him his wounds. Moved with compassion. Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each one of you forgives your brother. The top is forgiveness. The problem is the human heart, the human nature that loves to throttle another. The solution is the heart of God. Compassion for your enemy. May God grant us the grace. 
passion always in the name of Jesus. Please, can you help me pray for someone around you? Say, may you be moved by compassion. How many of us love this song? You stay fast, Lord. God, so God had to send somebody to 
stand on our behalf, to go to Calvary on our behalf, to atone on our behalf. That was the reason. One of the messages Jesus preached from the cross is, Father, forgive them, for they do not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they are so broken. Father, forgive them, for they keep messing up. They always mess up. Father, forgive them because they ask for forgiveness in the morning, and by evening, they are back to that very thing that they ask them for forgiveness. How many of us here, who among us has never been offended? Nobody has ever hurt you. Nobody has ever made you mad, even this morning. In those days when families used to go to church together, in my own family, my father is a lady dresser. And of course, in our culture, in my culture, women do the cooking stuff. So mom has to prepare us and also prepare breakfast. And then come to dress up as a woman to join us. And my father's duty is to wake up, take his bath, arrange himself, and then he brings out a car. And he's running from the car every morning, every Sunday morning. It's like a regular thing. There are times you can't see why, why is this woman not dressed up on time? But the friends, that is how it is in most families. Daddy will not understand why mom doesn't dress up on time. Mom will not understand why daddy is speaking like that to her every day. And this happens on daily basis. And you want to be in that kind of family without having compassion. The heart of mercy, the readiness to forgive. You want to live in a family and train children without having a compassionate heart. You cannot survive in the family. No marriage survives without forgiveness. So if there is nobody who needs this message today to have the heart of God and compassion, it is the man who is married and the woman who is married. It is that man who has children and that woman who has children. It is that person who lives in the family circle. He needs the mercy of God. He needs to live by compassion. Because you are living with somebody who the Bible says, God is not a son of man that he should lie or repent. So the son of man can turn around. He makes you promise in the morning. And by evening, they say, sorry, I cannot make it. Some people they say, sorry, they switch up their phone. And you get mad at them. And the next day, they expect you to smile at them. And if possible, pray with them. That is a family. So how do you live in a public yard without learning how to forgive one another? that you don't 
He can get so annoyed that we dress up in the morning and he's about to go to church because we are not eating the good. He wants to eat ice cream at 6 a.m. And you say, well, he starts crying profusely as if anything used to have been denied him of her. And you want to whoop them, but you have the heart of a father and you still pet them, carry them. Maybe he dress them up already and then they go and roll in the rock. So you have to take them back to the room, the room that you're going to wash sometime, someday, and then begin to dress them to go out. How do you live in a human society that is brutal without having the compassion that the Bible is talking about? How do you even worship in a church? Any parish church at all? Any Christian community at all? Not just those ones in Corinth and Galatia. I mean, the ones who said that tonight is blessed sacrament, said arms, said rules of Lima, wherever you go, the cathedral. That people come in. One day somebody was getting annoyed at the book. So you are angry at the book that is right there in Rome. For whatever he said, but they didn't say. You've not seen him before, and you are angry at the book. Not to talk of the parish priest who says, please lock my door on time. Please switch off that light. So you come to the circle, but don't come to church again. Because money, they don't like what the pastor said yesterday. There was an announcement by the pastor. And they choose to go to another church because they don't want to deal with that man. That's the church. Years ago, I served in a parish. The most populous parish in my diocese. I served in that church for like. 10 years. And as at the time I arrived at church, there were about 12,000 worshipers. So when you say that the charismatics are meeting, you are talking about a full fledged full church. The church gets filled, the church that is larger than this church gets filled to its brim. When members of Bible society show up, the church gets filled to its brim. When members of uh, the Rosary Water Society or the Block Rosary show up, the church is filled to capacity. And likewise, the Blue Army. And so, in this kind of church, we'll always be struggling with space and with ideology. Those who are committed to Maria devotion think that those who are committed to uh, charismatic spirituality are trying to spoil the church. Those who are committed to charismatic spirituality think that those who put the Bible every day are about to be the Catholic Church, and so on and so forth. And these people have to worship in one church. So there are societies who don't come to others. There are leaders when you belong to Society A, or when you belong to Ministry A, or when you belong to Group A, you don't want to talk to those in Group B. Because all these um, ushers, they think they don't miss church. Oh, all these lectors, because they read, they think, oh, they can talk to Father. That is why they are reading and keeping their mouth up this way. Oh, all these masters, they sit in the altar and they sit as if they are Prince Charles, they are now in charge of the church. And so on and so forth. And people carry these animosities every day and still come to church. And how do you go and receive communion when there is something that is bothering you, like the first reading said, that you have to hold grudges against your brother and you still want to come to the presence of the Lord and obtain healing and mercy? So I'm talking about something that is a real challenge in the church, my dear brothers. It's a real challenge beginning from the family. The reality of what we got to do every day and what we have to deal with every day to keep our Christian status is up and above us. It is not on the level of the human because the human person is broken. The human person is a broken person. So if you think that your neighbor is an angel, think again. If you think your wife is an angel, Brother, we take it. If you think that your priest is an angel, brother, the Bible says no one is good but God alone. If you think that the Pope will please everybody, even God cannot please everybody. People have 
have issues with God. If you've not seen, I can tell you a story of a lady. She doesn't go to church. Her problem is that why did God kill my mother? My mother died while I was still in high school. And she's got a problem with God from that day to you know, the day I encountered her with a cancer. So people have problems every day, even with themselves. You know, there are people who have, who have not forgiven and cannot forgive themselves. Anything that happens to them, they remember, oh, it was because sometime when I was in the high school, I received communion with God going for confession. That's why God is punishing me. You know, they, they are finding it difficult to forgive themselves of things that happened when they were young adults, of things that happened before they got married, and they are bringing that mentality and think it's God that is punishing you. No, it's you. Forgive yourself. Please let me tell somebody, be compassionate to yourself. Somebody needs to receive healing today in the name of Jesus. Be compassionate to yourself. My dear friends, we live in a fallen world, a broken world, and we are dealing with broken people on a daily basis. We got to realize this. And the best way and the only way you can deal with it without getting broken and without getting stuck in the human way is to begin to look at life in the wrong way. And that is what the Bible is teaching. The Bible recognizes that we have, do have problems every day. The Bible recognizes that man is a broken person. The Bible recognizes that by ourselves we cannot make it. And so the Bible decided to set the Father, the disposition of the Father. That same Father is the Father of the prodigal son. That same Father is the Father that the, the service was talking about today that is compassionate and merciful. Is full of compassion. That same father is a father that tells us in the book of the prophet Jeremiah that I have loved you with an everlasting love. Nothing changes my love for you. Even when you offended me, I still love you. That is a father that sent his son because he so loved the world that the son may come and identify with us. And so those who believe the son and align with the son and the disposition of the son will have eternal life, they will not perish, though they have broken. That is the father that we are talking about. And that is why we must learn from him compassion. Jesus said, learn from me, Matthew chapter 11, learn from me, for I am weak and gentle of man. I am able to understand what you are dealing with. Learn from him. What do we learn from Jesus? Learn the way Jesus relates to broken people. You can mention that there are too many of them that are popular in the scriptures. Let the way Jesus treats sinners, even those who are caught red handed and were brought in. Let's see it as a trust to the Gospel of John in chapter 4. He encountered the Samaritan woman. Everybody in the community knew how to be a sinner. But Jesus had time for her until he said to her, Go call your husband. And from there, conversion. Began in the womb. He did not accuse her of her sins because he's not the accuser. Revelation tells us that whenever we deal with the accusation, we are taking the ministry of the devil because the Bible calls him the accuser of our brethren. Revelation chapter 12. Watch every encounter where people are trying to take vengeance on their brother or their sister is always built on the argument why did she say it? Why didn't she see me? Why didn't she pay back her time? Why is she holding back my money? Why is she talking to me that way? Why doesn't she realize I'm the man in this house? Why is he talking to me? Why doesn't he know that I know the picture? It's always why, 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 why? The accuser of our brethren. Who accuses them day and night before our God? My friends, that is what the position many Christians who should be the advocate of the gospel and the advocate of the principles of the kingdom of God. That's why we live. We live on the basis of the world and we acquire the ministry of the accuser. And we're accusing everybody. You accuse your children, accuse your parents, accuse the pastor, accuse the church, accuse the president. People you have not seen before, you have issues with them, you're accusing them. Accuser of our prayer. That is why. We are animosity, anger, unforgiveness, built, abuse on. I will never forgive her because of what she did to me. You know what she did to me? She even went and told.
told my grandmother, she even went and told my mother-in-law. In fact, she was the person who told my husband that I said what I did not say. It's all great accusation. It's all great accusation. That's the nature of God. Well, that's not the nature of God. The nature of God is Father. Forgive them. They don't know what they do. The nature of God is, my son, your sins are forgiven. The nature of God is when Jesus, in John chapter 8, 1 to 10, a woman was brought to Jesus and he said, Master, we caught this woman in the very act of committing adultery. Moses said, Such people, we should stone them. What do you have to say? And then Jesus started writing on the ground. And according to some interpreters, he said he was writing everybody's sin. I told you, I saw you yesterday. I wrote a home. You, I saw you the other day, you stole from me. And you, I saw you the other day, you gossiped about me. You, I saw you the other day, you were watching pornography. You, after you had assembled all your sins, everybody that sees a sin walked away. And Jesus turned to the woman and said, Woman, has no one condemned you? Are they still with the accusation? They said, Oh, they are running away because they are also being accused by what they did yesterday. And Jesus said, Woman, Neither will I but you go home but sin no more. Go home but sin no more. As many as were sinners that came to Jesus, not one of them that Jesus is good. All of them he set them free. Even even if their sins were even the one who accused him on the cross. He said, You say you are the side. You can't even help yourself. And you are here and answering the side. That was a very person. He said, Father, forgive them, they know what. Not not it. My friends, I want you to see where we are, what good human beings, and where God is, the God of mercy and compassion. It's easy to sing about it, but difficult to follow suit, though we say we are sons and daughters of God. If I took this song, God of mercy and compassion.
church relax. We are dealing with business. How many people? There are some people who are even troubling their parents. Say, my mom, my mom dealing with my father. In fact, that was why my father died. And now she's asking me for money. And they are troubling their mother. They are troubling their mother. For a father that died many years ago. I don't know what happened within your father. But it's not between you and your mother. And you are a Christian. And you are holding your mother to ransom. And you are troubling her. You are troubling your mother in law because when you came to me, she spoke to you somehow. Now you are in America and she has come to visit us all. And she can no longer fight because she's not on working scene. And you are troubling the woman. And I'm bringing her to church too. You are troubling your husband because you are what it takes, you know, he's a Christian man and he cannot fight and he cannot do anything. And you are troubling your husband. Pay what you owe. Pay what you owe. You are troubling your fellow church members because you are in charge. Sometimes, sometimes, you are, you are living in a ministry and you can sit on people and on things that concern them and you are troubling them because you think you got the power. Hey, please help me beg somebody. Beg somebody around you say, please leave the person you are troubling. Leave the person you are holding. You are holding somebody to ransom. Leave that person alone. If it's your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, even your pastor, even the person who is even helping you spiritually. Some of us have used to proclaim the reverend sisters and the reverend fathers, or even some priests are proclaiming their parishioners. Leave the person you are holding because the master is coming. Can you hear me, church? As he was struggling, he didn't know that the master was coming back. And the master caught him on, on duty. There are people who are troubling others, thinking that they got the power now. No, you don't have any power because the master is coming. The master is coming. It's easy to throttle, more difficult to forgive. But the Bible is telling us if you do not forgive, then when the master shows up, he will come to your own sins and then you will be in trouble. That's the song. So may my heavenly father treat you if you do not each forgive each other from your heart. So if there is somebody you are troubling now, count the number of your sins. My mercy from that person's home. I know that you are still going Jesus. Tell, let me tell somebody you are going Jesus. Now it's a difficult message. That is why it's a life of grace. My friends, it's a life of grace. If you cannot come into it by grace, you are not able to do it. The song, Amazing Grace, tells us that um, I was a wretched sinner. But only grace has brought me this far. That is why anybody that wants to live a Christian life must live it by grace. Your soul every day should be, Give me that grace to follow. Above that grace to follow, we need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. I need your grace to follow. Above that grace to follow, we need your grace to follow. Your grace is Mercy. That's what we're saying. You need 
Let's now let us rise and profess our faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, and Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints? The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. We are proud to profess it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. My dear friends, the word of God today has challenged us to move from the natural and to begin to live the supernatural life of grace. We cannot do it by ourselves except God strengthens us. Let us pray for that grace that we need to be able to forgive so that we too may be forgiven and that our world may be a better place. For Pope Francis, all the bishops, priests, religious, and church leaders, may they follow Christ's example of compassion and mercy to forgiveness and serving others. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the leaders of nations will courageously seek reconciliation and peace for the sake of harmony in the world. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the repose of the souls of those who died and provision to consolation for all impacted by the flooding in Libya and earthquake in Morocco, may this proliferation of natural and man-made disasters which causes suffering to, those, to so many, the innocent and the guilty, become by God's grace an invitation to care for our neighbor and call to conversion, conversion to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, amen. We pray for the Lord's guidance, blessing, and all planning for our upcoming Thanksgiving Harvest 2023. May our harvest event be a source of unity for all parish community and an opportunity to cultivate an attitude of gratitude for the Lord's kindness and mercy towards us. We pray to the Lord. Lord. In thanksgiving for the blessings received during the Real Love Ministries Conference and the family this weekend, may the Lord bless this ministry and its mission of nurturing and building up families for Jesus. We, we, we remember Priscilla Kutiku at this Mass and thank the Lord for her role in being one of the founding members of Real Love Ministry. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may experience the healing touch of our risen Lord. We specially pray for John Paul Marr, Orlando Marco, Agustin and Gugucha, Rosemary Joseph, Marie Joseph, Marie Jo Natus, and all the same. We pray to the Lord. May the victory of Christ over sin, death, bring hope, eternal life to those who have died, and consolation to those who mourn. We specially pray for Priscilla Utiku, Antonia Lichi. Richard Carey, Patience Goodwood, Charity Oparogu, Glenda Joseph, Cynthia Singh, Rebecca Egwin, Alicia Pader, Blanca Reyes, and all of our deceased loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers. For the intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah. And we pray now for all who have been hurt in relating with friends and family and colleagues, those who are carrying around broken hearts, and because they're broken within, are retaliated through our forgiveness and are multiplying problems for themselves. Those who are fighting 
or they think it is a cause of justice on their behalf, but are ending up hurting themselves even more. Those who are fighting, those they perceive to be enemies or aggressors, and have created bitterness that is creating all the sicknesses in their lives, or is opening the door for the devil to steal the joy of their salvation. That a good Lord who knows how to heal the broken heart, they bring them healing, the kind of healing that mercy and forgiveness alone. For Jesus spoke to the man who was paralyzed and said, My son, your sins are forgiven. And instantly he was healed. As many as are broken because of the wounds inflicted on them by others, emotional or physical, the wounds of false accusation, the wounds of division in family. The wounds of broken promises, the wounds of misunderstanding and disappointment, the wounds of bereavement, for which people are pointing accusing fingers on those that fell that killed their loved ones, beginning from those who walk in the hospital to friends and family that the believer have done something in the room to occasion the death of their spouse or someone who is dear to them and they are still nursing those wounds. Father, as many as are broken, who have been disappointed serving the church, serving the parish family, those who have been broken and who are wounded serving the society, whatever they may be. Many who are even in prison now and are finding it difficult to forgive whoever pushed them into prison. That you, Lord, may reach out to them as we pray. For your love knows no boundaries. Bring healing, O oh Lord, to those at home, those in the prisons, and those here with us. Lord God, who have heard this message of healing from God today. Lord, let your healing touch come. That as we forgive ourselves and forgive others, your healing touch may be made perfect in us. Your healing mercy will flow through our being.
communities will receive them and parishes will be whole again. Our families will be whole again for you are here to be in touch through the intercession of Mary our Blessed Mother. May these favors we are asking for be granted as we all say, Hell Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sins, now and at the hour of our death. And Heavenly Father, receive our prayers and supplications, and grant all the favors we have asked for. And even the ones we have not asked for, that you know we need. For we make all our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord.
together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and the whole clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faiths. Have mercy on us all who pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph and Scott, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ who gives us access to heaven. Jesus Christ who forgave all our sins and did not hold back. Jesus Christ who has taught us to forgive as he has forgiven us. Blessed are we who are called to the suffer of the land. No, I am not worthy that you should enter on the land. But only say, O oh, my soul shall. For the blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift the Lord will pray take possession of our minds and our bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, we see it. Is there anyone here for the first time who would just like to welcome you? Anyone here who has never met him? Welcome. Welcome. Bless you. Would you take a second and tell us your name? Where you're from? And how did you come here today? What brought you here today? It's who brought you. He's got a couple announcements. Thank you, Real Love Ministries, for actually. Thank you, Father Albert. Thank you, Father Albert, for ministering God's word to us over this weekend and this day as well. And putting flesh on it so that we might be able to receive that word. You know, when you receive a word, it's like it, sometimes it can be like a pill. If you open up a pill and try to eat what's inside, it's like bitter. So you have to put a coating around it. And that's what the story is that uh, uh, Albert gave. Kind of like a way to put a coating around so that we can receive that word. So thank you, Father Albert, for helping us to receive that word, which is life. It's definitely life. And may we receive it with joy and persevere so that it may bear great fruit in our midst. Amen? Amen. That's a lifetime of learning. Thank you to Real Love Ministries for a wonderful conference that took place this weekend, in particular the President, Dr. Laura Macubo. Thank you to speakers, Father Albert, Father Solomon, who ministered to us, and Father, excuse me, Dr. Rockway. Each for ministering the Lord's grace to us. Um, 
make it for us. Sustain you and give you back a hundredfold for giving generously. Uh, just one word about Father Albert. I know what it is to be a pastor of the parish, so I thank you for stepping away from the parish to care for us here. So may the Lord bless you and multiply you. God is good and all the time.
God is good. All the time. And all the time. We thank God for this great opportunity to be ministers of the gospel, but I want to appreciate and celebrate on my own behalf, my brother, Father Joseph, for having a heart for the pastor. I will stop thanking him, especially for being open to invite me over every time. And together with all the priests on staff with him, Father Peter, and all the priests who are not here, my brother, Father Louis, who serves us and stands in the gap for us and has been serving this parish over the years. We God continue to keep him in good health and reach out to the priests and to bless them and this parish in a special way for all that you do to uplift the name of God in the inner city. I needed to be a pastor in the inner city to appreciate what it means to run a church in the inner city. So I appreciate Father Joe more for all his sacrifices to be here. And all of you will support these parishes in the inner city. May God continue to bless you all and reward you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to thank a special way in the real love ministry for inviting me over once again. And I want to share my testimony with them. I lived in St. A's for like three years by the invitation of Father Joseph. But as a matter of fact, it was real love ministry that brought me in contact with Father Joseph. So it was preaching this particular conference that brought me to this parish and Father Joseph saw me and then came after me and said, Father, please can you come and join me to minister to people in this parish. So, Ray Lord Ministry, thank you for inviting me over once again. But above all, thank you for giving me a brother. Because since you invited me, Father Joseph has from that time to now been not just a brother priest, but a biological brother in the Lord. And that's a Real Love Ministry also gave me the open door to minister in the United States. I was a resident student in the parish out there, and by inviting me here, I got an opportunity to be invited directly into ministry. I was just living in a parish. I was not serving in ministry, but by the invitation Father Joseph gave me, I had the opportunity to host Bible study to preach the gospel, both in this state and out of this state by the contacts that this parish gave me. And through that, I was here when I was called by no qualification. I was not actually qualified to be a pastor. I'm not a priest of this diocese. I am not serving a ministry in this diocese. I was just on student visa. And while I was still on student visa, I was a post appointed an administrator of a parish, God see of Raymond Ministry and But above all, I talk to Real Love Ministry that for 18 years they have been standing strong for family and apostolate. That is one apostolate that is highly needed in the United States. Incidentally, the ministry that God gave me vision for while I was in Nigeria is called Catholic Family Outreach. So we try to reach out to family. So when I saw Real Love Ministry, I connected with them, I've been with them, and will continue to be with them. So when the Alex was saying, I don't feel to mention families. It's something I feel that I am called to and I am grateful. Through Real Love Ministry, I've also come to encounter other friends and brothers who are committed to the Lord. Let me mention in a special way Dr. New Carver, who drives all the way from upstate New York and is committed to a ministry here. Over years that he left New Jersey, he still keeps coming to minister and to support ministry here. God bless you and your family and our glory in Jesus' name. <laughs> Recently, I was able to appreciate Dr. Wakwe, another brother I encountered through this ministry. But today, I don't want to thank him. I want to thank his wife and children who allow him to be coming here every day. Let me go to Dr. Wakwe. Say to your wife that I have had sense and greetings on behalf of me and the whole of New Jersey, oh, God bless you. Thank you for coming over. 
And for all of you who, through your prayers, your intercessions, your gifts and donations, support the apostolate of real Lord ministry, may God continue to bless you. I will finally conclude with saying that worshiping God and running the parish in the inner city, especially the crime that Father Joseph is from, is always very challenging. And so we need to support him emotionally. We need to support him in prayers. But above all, we need to support him with what he needs to make this ministry move forward, especially from the point of view of resources. Apart from prayers and resources. Most of us who serve in the inner city parish, we inherited old structures that are breaking down every now and then and need maintenance. In most of the time, we don't have parishioners who can step in. In some other parish there are parishes who have parishioners who can step in and say, Father, just buy the material and we'll do the fixing. But in the inner parishes, in the inner city, you just can't take care of that kind of thing. And the resources that come in every Sunday are that limited. And then you have more people who are coming in to ask for arms, and you have more needs to maintain structures and things like that. It's very challenging. There are times you can sit in the office and spend almost 60, 70 percent of your time on resources and office management than you do on pastoral work, especially. So when you see Father Joe come, pass back, please thank him all and support him all through your prayers. But if the Lord has blessed you yesterday, that told you was talking about tithing, that is required of us 10 percent. But they can go over and across for The reason the Catholic Church no longer emphasizes title is because in the dispensation of law, you are free to give God all. Maybe God has blessed you. After title and making all your savings, you still have resources. Bless the Church of God. People built this place, kept it, the doors open until our time. Let it not close in our time. You wouldn't be able to test it. If God has blessed you, please be more generous with the things of God. Be more generous. Everything you have has come from God. Yesterday, our speaker, Dr. Toby, was saying that he's looking towards a time when he can donate as much as a million dollars to the church. If God has blessed you, and you can step out and say, Father, let me change the raw in this church. Let me change the light in this church. People can do it and not be hurt. But they are holding it because they want to build another structure and buy bigger real estate. It's good to invest. But then every investment that does not take into consideration the investment in the house of God is a question mark on your feet. May God help us as we're going through this harvest, Thanksgiving season, to find the reason to support this parish more. And as we do so, may God continue to bless us, protect us, and assure us of an eternal homeland in heaven as a beauty spoke on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a takeaway, some books from Dr. Wakwe. They are spiritual books that can encourage you in your journey. One of them, a weapon of warfare, the Muslim is all about a blessed one. Try and get that book to bless you. Believe me, it will bless your life and challenge you to insist on family prayers and family rosary. There's another one on the invisible world, opening your eyes to some realities beyond what we're seeing, that there is a war happening in the spiritual. And actually, the hours are after our children. Please read that book and challenge yourself to be conscious of what is happening in the super sensible. Finally, war against the mind of spirit, against things that hold us down, everyone will go to dream and can cause her or give without that doing them for the two and two. They are all out there and will also be in the hall when we go for fellowship. Big one, bless your life and be blessed through that ministry of the man of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. I will rise now, bow down your heads and pray for God's
May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gift of his blessings. Amen. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hurts in his love. Amen. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in gifts of hope, faith and charity, and may come happily to our eternal homeland through a life of mercy and compassion. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far away from you and your family, and in his kindness pour upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his word. May he always fill you with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hasting and alone in the path of God's commands and make good heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be set upon you and be with you now and forever. Amen. This Mass is over. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Take a seat at the time.